And again, we just want to welcome everyone in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. We thank God for the opportunity he has given us to gather on the Zoom platform where we can, you know, study and be edified and grow more in the knowledge of the Lord. So at this time, we're going to have prayer. So if you could kindly pray with me. We're going to say a prayer. My table last and follow which are in heaven. We thank you for your many blessings bestowed upon us. We ask for your guidance and direction of your Holy Spirit as you are about to study your holy word. And for everyone who chose to join us, Lord, may you be with us and bless us. And we ask that your presence be in our studies, that we will learn and be more edified in you, Heavenly Father. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How was Sabbath, um, Sister Hart? How was Sabbath for you? It was beautiful. I spent it with you guys. <laughs> oh, that's I good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, that's I'm enough so for that. So Sister Daphne, yeah. Sister Shaley, and Sister Hart joined us today, and we thank God for you all on this Sabbath day. Um, what we can do today, we can, we could go, did you all follow along on the lesson study? Yeah, yes, yes, I did. Okay, I mean, we could, we could briefly go over it. If there's um, anything that you all would like to, to ask or contribute. Uh, I'm just going to share the link in the chat, okay, for everyone. So um, I'm posting the link now, and I'm going to share my screen so we all could see it. All right. So the title for today's lesson was The Almighty God, or is The Almighty God. And, um, you know, we have our scripture reading taken from Genesis 1. And it showed us how God created all these things um, with nothing being existent. You know, for example, the earth. The earth has matter. It has a chemical composition to it. You know, the stars, the sun, the moon. You know, the sun has... Um, they call it nuclear fusion, where there's a constant combustion of gases that cause an ignition of fire, you know? And this has been going on for thousands of years. And it hasn't run out yet. As a matter of fact, we feel the sun getting hotter, right? <laughs> but that may be because of the ozone layer depletion and radiation levels and all these things. Um, you know, the moon is responsible for the gravitational pull on the earth. It controls the tides. It controls, um, you know, how plants grow, even your hair grow. And we see how God is so great and amazing. He is so great and amazing. So, um... So my question to the class so far is, why did God create all these things? What is the purpose of God's creation? Well, we have Deacon Tom and Sir Tom just joining us. Class, what, what do you think the purpose of God's creation of the world, the heavens and the earth is? He created it for mankind. For mankind? Okay. So I guess man is so special that he created a, 
dwelling place for mankind? So yes, you think God just it. did all these things and he didn't have a purpose for it? He had a purpose. Any of us have us sit down and think about that? Like, why did God create life and everything in the planet? The earth and the heavens, the stars, the galaxies, the planets. What is the purpose for all these things? I understand it's for, um, you know, like sister said, it's for the habitation of man. Yes, but is what else can we say about, you know, why God created the heaven and the earth and everything else. So Deacon Sim just join us. So the question for the class is, what is the purpose of God creating the heaven, the earth, and everything that dwells within the galaxies, the planets? What what is God must have had a purpose for it? What would we say the purpose is? There is a scripture that says God created all things for his purpose and for his own will. And that is why. I mean, he did not say for that particular, or he said for his purpose and for his own will. That's how he created. So people can also say for this and that particular. He created all things for his purpose and for his own will. Well, I see... Um... God is a being that likes praise. He likes the attention. Um, he created us, created us to praise him. That's why he's so jealous when we say we have a piece of plastic or concrete to call it a God. Um, I think that's why he created us. Especially for his purposes, you know. The galaxies you ask about, I don't know. Um, he have his reasons, I don't know. Sometimes I want to believe there's other beings out there because if God is so great, it can't, the earth can't be the only thing you're running, you know. To me, that's a small matter for him. Maybe he's, um, I'm pretty sure he's doing more than just the earth, you know. So that's how I see it for now. Uh, that's interesting, you know, to see people believe, human beings believe more in aliens who they've never seen. They have no evidence of aliens or extraterrestrial life, you know, but yet they don't believe in God. <laughs> and the evidence of God is everywhere. And everything we see, there's life. And, you know, it just goes to show people are just um, blind to their own um, delusions. They don't want to just accept that God is God. He's the creator of all things. And again, for everything, there is a purpose. And, and Deacon Tom said, we were and are created for his purpose and for his pleasure. That's what the scripture says. It's just like um, people would ask, a husband and wife, what did you why did you have a child? Why did you choose to procreate? Why did you choose to bring a life into this world? Knowing that there is a possibility that the child is gonna suffer pain, um, sickness, death, but yet you chose to bring a, a child into this world. Some of us even have more than one. They can some have twelve. Right, they can some? You have twelve children, right? 13. 13 children. Why are they adding more every time I ask him? <laughs> I mean, so, 10. So, <laughs> so the question is, what is it about us that resembles God that value life? You know? You could I see you have to say something, Deacon Tom. Yeah, you see, um Paul make a statement, say we know in part now. And that time will come when we know in full. That means what be revealed to us is just a little fraction. Uh -huh. And we cannot know that. We cannot know all about it. But the time will come 
when the father will reveal to us everything. Right. But right yeah. now, the little thing that we know. Even Christ said, there is much thing I can tell you, but you are not ready for that yet. Right. Paul said, I reach to the third heaven, but nobody do not ask me. Because what I see is not lawful to say to somebody. Me alone can just hold my peace, because who will believe what I see? There is a lot of things in this life. We do not know lost a quarter of it yet. And we will not know until the time comes when the Father will be ready to reveal it in full. Right. So, so again, the question is purpose. What is our purpose? Why did God create us? Why did he create the heavens and the earth? And again, we agree. The scripture says it's for his pleasure and for his purpose. And what if I told you Jupiter is placed strategically exactly where it is in the galaxy to block meteors and asteroids from hitting Earth. As a matter of fact, there's a, a field that protects the Earth from you know debris from space from entering into Earth's atmosphere. You know, and it's just so amazing how God created the galaxies, the heaven, the earth, and everything in it. Some say it again. Yeah, some did hit the earth. Yeah, yeah, some they do. Right, you know. But it doesn't do like major damage, you know, like yes, as, yes. But not as much as it can be if these things were not there. You understand? Actually. Yeah, like they have the crater, like they say that wiped out the dinosaurs and all that stuff. But no, just recently in Russia. I mean, have... some years ago. Uh huh. Okay, no problem. But even for mankind, why did God create man in his image and his likeness? Did, did God give man a purpose? What was the responsibility that God gave man? To replenish the earth, multiply. But not only that, but did God create a garden for the man to dress it and prepare it? And Well, that part there, I... You don't know? <laughs> no, not I don't know. I doesn't talk too much about it. I don't really believe that. I don't believe man had to dress the gap and yeah, take care of it. That's that's what the God scripture said. The garden. He yeah, made yeah. it before no sin, you have to keep it clean. But the garden I think was there before man. So why who was cleaning it? There are certain verses in the Bible that King James put, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think God said it was good. God knew it was good. There wasn't a chance of the creation failing and he created man and it was so good. I think in the, the writings of... Give the gun on the mic. The angel, the two angels from heaven for to visit to, to visit uh, Lord, um, um, Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh -huh. He said, the Lord sent them to see what, if what he sees is so. That, that you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> when, when, that is how the scriptures say. As to, to see, the other time I say, well, that is how the scripture put it. But what things God cannot see? That is what, but he said, he, he sent them to make sure if what he see is so. And we know that is how the word saying, this is a mere of talking, but that is not the power of God. Huh? And, and again, it's a translation from language of how it was to, to English. So, but in understanding with my common sense, I know there is not a thing God cannot see. David in Psalm, 159 said, if I take all the darkness of the world and cover myself, he said, even the darkness and the light are just above before you. If I make my bed in hell, your hand can reach me there. Yep. There is no way, there is nothing you cannot see. So, so again, the, the reason why I'm asking the question is for purpose. There, there were two things. God created the man to let me let me just pull up the verse. 
um, that's in Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord put the man, and the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So he had a responsibility. He had a, you know, he had a purpose. Not only that, but also we read in Genesis 1, where God said he created man in his own image and in his own likeness, that's verse 27. Now let's, look, let's go to verse 26. He said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish and the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him and male and female and created he them. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So again, you see, God just didn't create man, but he gave him purpose. He said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. And um, he also gave him dominion over the earth and everything that was in the earth. You know, and um, it goes to show that it, it kind of reminds me of a, a a man who wants to have a family. You know, he's like, he has to have a place for him to put his children or his creation or his offspring, you know. You know, so it's important that the men, while the men, yes, the men are the providers, the protectors, the women bring forth, they carry the seed and bring forth. But they, they should also try their best to have a place for the children to grow and be able to survive and sustain. And that's what God did. He created a garden with food, with the ability to sustain man. He gave him a, a purpose, a dominion and authority over the animals and the earth. And he was created in the image of God, you know. So the same righteous characteristics of God, man was supposed to implement in his reign, you know. God is righteous and holy. And that's what the scripture says, even before the world began, we were called to be holy, you know. So God gave man purpose. He gave us a reason for existing. And I think it's important that we also be reminded as to why God created man in the first place. And that's why God from since the fall of man to even today, that's over 6,000 years maybe, God has never stopped trying his best to save mankind. From Genesis all the way to Revelation, we see God is always trying to save mankind. You know, and that's the most beautiful thing to me about the story of God and, and humans. You know, you mean to tell me from Genesis all the way to Revelation, over 6,000 years, from the history of mankind, mankind have fallen time and time again. And yet God was there to, you know, forgive them, take care of them, provide for them, um, be there for them as a God. There are times where God had to punish man, you know, but there are also times where he saved them more times than he punished to me. You know, and that just, that just goes to show how much love God has for us to the point where he even sent his only begotten son, you know, to die for us, to redeem us back to him. So always remember, we are created in God's image. Now, my question to the class would be, what does it mean to be created in the image of God? What does that really mean? Or what, what weight or what value does that have and reminding us as to who we are as the image of God or the creation of God. And Elder Jules just came in, so y'all could ask him questions as well. So the question is to the class, what, what does it mean to be, what does, how would you explain to other people we are in, created in the image of God and in his likeness? What does that really mean?
gap for question. We may not get the answer for them, but there's a lot of open gap for question as it is given unto us. What we see now, we can ask a lot of questions. Now, for instance, all the imagination of man was contrary to God's. That's why in the book, in the first um, world, you never heard one of the law that he had passed. How it was, but there must have, there had must be law that they broken, but we do not know which one he said. And if all the imagination of them was um, contrary to the law of God, that means there was a law to follow, but it is not written for we to say which law it was. Here Christ, the Bible say, when man sin. In the, in the flood, God opened a window of water in heaven and he poured down on the earth. Man probably have never seen water rain yet. And that would go. So there are a lot of things that we do not finish, understand, and we may not know until when we will be in the kingdom with Christ. He will reveal everything to us. But I do believe there was the law that passed to them that they should not be broken, and they broken it. They go beyond. That's why he sent flood upon them. And he said he opened the windows of water in heaven. So we see in is the heaven have a, 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 a flood of water? Yes, according to the Bible. But that I will explain, it may, be di it may be different, but according to the English version that we have, that's how we can see, that's what we can see. You open the windows of water from heaven. And that's what it is, but we do not know not much about it. What was the law they broken? How many, what kind of it? But today we know what he said after he passed the law to Moses and to many of them. Even from Noah, even from Noah, there was not a law written to say well, that was the law they broken. You confuse them. So, so again, my question would be, what does it mean for us to be the image of God? And in Colossians 1, we see that Christ is the image of the invisible God. Now, was Christ the image of the invisible God only when he took on the fleshly form? Or was he also the image of the invisible God even before? Go ahead, Sister Hart. I think he was. And, and when... when... <clears throat> When he say hybrid <laughs> this afternoon, it says, um, I think it we, we created in his moral, spiritual, and intellect. We can't do anything without God. Whatever we do, it came from him. And whatever man's knowledge increase comes from God. So we whatever we do morally comes from him. Whatever we do spiritually should come from him. But because man, man fall. It changes. I don't know. <laughs> We're created as more as spiritual in his character and in like intellect. Okay. So, so we were created with God's moral character, with the knowledge of good. And when Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, that's when the knowledge of evil became embedded into our, our nature. Is that what you're saying, sis? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Because we, he created us good in the in the beginning, maybe, and then things changed after. But I think, yeah, I guess it's it's, it's bigger than I am. So I think um, we still have the moral and spiritual and intellect from God still. 
but you guys can elaborate more more on it. <laughs> it's bigger than I am. Okay. And again, we're, we're looking at verse 20, 26 and 27, where God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him. Now, and again, I quoted Colossians 1, where it refers to Christ as who is the image of the invisible God. And my question was, when did he execute, not execute, but when did he, when was he the expression of the invisible God, the image of the invisible God? Was it before he came in the flesh? Like, because, uh, you know, in the beginning of time, or was he the image of God in the flesh? And Brother Clifton, I see you there, so maybe you could help us out. Anyone else? Sister Paulette, you want to share your response? Sister Peters? Good evening, Brother Gideon and Pastor Jews and Olive Virgin. Um, I, I think if I remember that Philip asked Jesus to show him the Father and it sufficed him. And Jesus said to him, if he see him, he see God. So Jesus never changed. The only change Jesus changed was when he put on flesh to come to earth to die for us. So he's always been in the image of God. So he was in the image of God before he came to the earth, yes. while he was on earth. And even as he died and resurrected, he is still the image of God. Yeah, it doesn't change. The only change was to put flesh on to die for us. Okay. Anyone else agree or disagree with Sister Paula? <laughs> I agree. You know, I give you this one, right? Is it three? Who being in the express of his person? Country? Yeah, but it's the opposite to me. That is why if you have seen me, you have seen my father. Because of Hebrews 1, 3. Russian Knight said he is the image. But that one is saying his picture. His look alike. Eh? No, that's not it, is it? Okay. Okay, yeah. If you look at verse 3 of Hebrews 1, this is on that basis, you say, if you have seen me, you have seen my father also. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, his lookalike twin. So if you look at me, that's what my father is like. It's like he's my twin brother not just any twin as we look at it, but identical twin. They have twins that doesn't look alike, but there are twins that you cannot tell apart. And I believe Christ, in all manner, he was in the, glory, um, the image of God, in the glory that we could not see, he was in the image, and the one that we can see with our naked eye, that was he, because he said, The glory that I have with you from the beginning, that is one. But he didn't have that. But glory he did not have that when he came to earth. No. So we cannot tell, but all what I'm saying, even in that time, he was in the same image with the Father. Now, when we saw him in the image of what we can behold with our naked eye, 
He said that is how he looked. So we can say about the flesh. But then I do believe in the spirit is the same thing, the glory, image of his father. They look alike. No matter how. That's how I look at it. Because he said the glory that I have with you from the beginning, which we do not know. How did he look in the spirit? Huh? How did he look in the spirit? I mean, because he had a glory in the spirit that we do not know from the beginning. Until he said, prepare me a body. He couldn't put that on. Nobody would be able to look at huh? him. If he had put that on, nobody would look that at him. Just, no, that is just what I'm saying. I say, in that was a glory, an image of his father, but we cannot tell. Okay. But until he came in the flesh. So I say the glory he had from the beginning is not what he came in the flesh. But to me, it is same, they still look, the image, like look alike, which we cannot tell how it was, but we can tell according to what we see in the flesh. And that is what he told us. But since he said, since he said the, um, the glory that I have with you from the beginning, it is not what we see. Hello, Jules. Um, as Deacon Tom mentioned, the glory he had from the beginning, would we say that the Mount Transfiguration was an example of a glory that he had before he came to earth? Mm -hmm. When he was transfigured? John 17, 3. Yeah, let me pull it up. May I say good afternoon to every one of you who are participating with us today. May the God of heaven bless and keep you all and increase your learning. Good afternoon, Elder Bruce. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Peace be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So wait, all the time that you're not telling me good afternoon, as well as Jules come here saying good afternoon. Good afternoon, Andy, Brother Gideon. I just joined Brother Gideon. <laughs> did, you, did you tell all of them good afternoon? Yeah, I tell them good afternoon. <laughs> but you didn't tell them. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, sorry. There we go. Brother Gideon. Yes. Can can uh, the question that you asked with with um Jesus was he in does Philippians two six have anything to do we'll with it? Five or six. Yeah. What was the scripture allegiance? The glory I had with you before the world was it's either five or six. Yeah. Father, I pray those thou hast given me may yeah, be held yeah. my glory. Mm -mm. Where you get it, Brother Gideon? Verse 5. Verse 5. I come to you, okay, Sister Hart. Let me just have a little Jules look at this. Yeah. And now, O oh Father, glorify me with thine own self. With the glory that glorify me with thy own self. In other words, whatever glory that I had come from you. And that was the glory which I had with you before the world was. I want them to see that. I thank God very much when we may understand our reason for struggling to be saved. That none of these things will be hidden from us as we desire to know. The glory I had with you, meaning I don't have it now. I had to give it up. When Moses went to the mountain, Israel could not look at Moses when right. he came down because of the glory. And that's the power of veil. Over and that him. is coming from him or derived from the Father. So if he come and manifest in that glory, no man would be able to look at him. And the, even the veil of the glory had a symbol symbol to it. First Corinthians, you mean? No, when Moses came down from the mountain and the glory shone. First Corinthians. Yeah. What did it do? 
First Corinthians 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 16, 17. Somewhere there. Whenever Moses is being read, the veil remain up to this day. Is it the second? What it is? What it read? But even until this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. That's mm -hmm. what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Mm -hmm. Speaking about speaking about the significance of the law and those who trust in the law and not Christ. Only when they turn to Christ will they understand or see it better. But until then, they only see and understand what Moses delivered. The change is necessary. So the glory of God on Moses represented the, the glory of God in the Holy of Holies. And the veil that covered his face represented the veil that was there to separate the Holy of Holies and the Holy Place. Until Christ came and he tore the, the through the power of his, his death and his fulfillment of his, his um, sacrifice, when he died, the veil of the temple rent in two, separating the Holy of Holies and the Holy Place so that we have access to the Holy Place, Holy of Holies, through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So we, we may look at quite a lot of it. I mean, they are explained a lot of places in the Bible. We just have to try to recall them when we, when we need them. But while they sound simple, but they had a meaning that would reveal in the future. Like we said, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. Or rather, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So we, we base our belief on what is revealed to us by the word of the living God. Yet, being in the latter days, there will be more confusion as the world is bringing back what they call the Ethiopian Bible. It's not being done by children of God or Christian, but by those who believe in Christ, so as to confuse those who believe. Hold fast to what you have or what you learn. Again, Elder Jules say to you, devote your life to follow Matthew 5, 6, and 7. If you don't move left or right, it will take you straight to the kingdom. So I have a question for you, Elder Jules. Mm -hmm. So seeing that God, God created man in his own image and likeness, is that a reflection of the same image that Christ portrayed on earth as the image the, of... Mount, the mountain of transfiguration was portraying the return of the Lord, how it's no, going to... Not necessarily the mountain of transfiguration, just in general. Christ took on the fleshly form to show mankind that we can overcome in the flesh the same way he overcame in the flesh. Is it... First Timothy three or second Timothy three. To wit that God was in Christ. Timothy, yes, it's Timothy. Eh? Second Corinthians. No. Oh, go ahead, read it. Let me hear. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. To, to wit, wit that, that God, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. While you were not seeing the power that works within Christ, it was God in him, as it is today Christ in us. But many people may have never understood it in full detail, but what he was doing, he was not just resting. He was reconciling the world to himself. Amen. Not only that he had ambassador, 
but he was with the ambassador, giving him support and enlightenment. So that together, they can reconcile the world, or rather, deliver the creature they had created from the bondage of Satan. Mountain of Transfiguration was a vision. It was not real. Is that the way you learn it? I, I thought it was literal. <laughs> In the Mount of Transfiguration, was it Matthew 8? Let me pull it up. Hold on. Let me give you a hint. There shall be some of you standing here that you're not tasting. Huh? Okay. What chapter you have there? Matthew 17. 17, go 16. Read the last four verses. Okay. <clears throat> For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. With his holy angels. This is Matthew 16. Go up. Go, no, you too, you too low. Go again. So, go up to oops. 20 somewhere there. Verily I say unto you, there shall be some of you standing here that shall not taste there. Yeah, that's verse 28. Oh, 28. Okay, yeah. read it. So I'll do 27 and 28. Mm -hmm. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you that there be some standing here which shall not taste death, taste of death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Okay, then the other chapter. And after how many days? Uh, six, six days, I believe. Chapter 17? Yeah. Hold on. And after six days, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John his brother, and brings them up into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for, for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Do you know why Peter, how Peter recognized Moses and Elijah? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe mm -hmm. the Spirit revealed it to them, Elijah? Say that again. The Spirit revealed it oh, to them? The answer might be there. Continue the reading. And while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a vo behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Continue. Mm -hmm. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were oh, so afraid. It was Luke that gave us that. Luke. Luke? Yeah. Get the one in Luke to me. If I hindi? Twenty. Go from verse twenty-seven. If you want, go ahead. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here shall not taste death, taste of death, till they see the kingdom of God. And it came to pass about 
and eight days after. How come how come Matthew says six and Luke says eight? I'm just going to show you all the differences. <laughs> Go ahead. And about eight days after these things, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter... And they that were with him were, okay, I see it, were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for three, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Not knowing what he said. You say that again? Not knowing what he said. That's the key. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Ma if you read Matthew's account alone, it's different from, from yep. Luke's account. That is why we have to know all of them, where to find them, based on what discussion that you are in. Not knowing what he said. But there's another one in up there that is very interesting. Moses and Elijah is dead. But why are they talking with time? If they are dead. That's a good question. So Why are they talking to Christ if they are dead? So it couldn't be like a literal land. It was in deep sleep. It is what we call a somnambulist. He works a talk in his sleep. Walk in his sleep. Hmm? The Lord can show him what it will look like. Hmm. Not what natural now, but because he said some of you are in did not die before you see. And I believe that is what is um, happened. In this in the natural life, you see what so we are not having the symptom. sense of the man. They were trans they was in deep trans um what do you call it? the mind was not natural. It was in spirit. It was in the spirit, so we saw them what it really looked like. And I believe that is what the scripture says some of you will not die till you see the coming of the second uh, of man. Second coming of the son of man. And he referring to them that will be told to them in that configuration. Read the other verse again. 34. While he does speak, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. And they feared as they entered into the cloud. So they entered into a cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. What do you understand by that? It's a different story from, from Matthew. <laughs> this is my beloved son, hear him. And some people believe it means don't tell him what to do, but listen to what he tells you. Would that be possible? Why would Peter want three tabernacles? Is it for them to worship? Why you want a tabernacle right. for Moses, one for Elias? Right. Anyway, one of these days we'll go through it in detail. If you build three tabernacles, you will worship on that tabernacle. If not them, maybe the others who learn about it go on. Kind of like what it did with Moses' staff. Okay. <laughs> like I said, there are little points in there. Though they were apostles, but there were also weakness in them. So so we, we would say that uh, Luke's mm -hmm. account is more accurate than Matthew's. Say that again? 
Luke's account is more accurate than Matthew's account. It may not necessary, it may be translation error. The figures, like Max say, at the third hour, Christ was on the cross. John say, six hour. Luke say, six hour. So there are real discrepancy with the way the letters are shaped, particularly when it starts to worn down. You look at a three, like if you look at a three and you look at a one out eight. It look like a three, yeah. They probably can give you the same thing. And this is why some people, when they write seven, they put a dash across it because it can look like one on your own out. Fully aware, because at that time the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost was not poured upon them, as Christ said, "I will give you my Spirit, I send my Spirit, and He will teach you all things whatsoever I have told you." Because He speaks something He saw, but He was not led by the Spirit at that time. He was in the what He understand at the moment, but when after the Spirit poured upon them. They fully understand what God was talking about and what it is. What they saw, how it is. So I believe Peter have a different understanding than what he saw and what he's saying because he was not speaking of his mind at that time. If he did not know what he said, he might not even recall it. Is that true? Because at that time he was not in his natural sense. Yeah, but it was the Lord who said, I will show you. Some of you standing there will not face death. You're going to see how my resurrection is going to be and what my coming is going to be. So, so when Christ said, you shall see the kingdom of God, they will not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. I guess the kingdom of God is a re representation of witnessing the glory of Christ and also um, Elijah and Moses. Elijah was caught up to heaven as some of us will be caught up when Christ returns and Moses was buried as some will be buried before our Lord and Savior returns and the same way they were able to come to life at the resurrection they that's the two types of resurrection is that correct Elder Jules? yeah that's the representation of what they see the living caught up without died and the death raised from the dead Yeah, it's a good, it's a very good example of what it is. But the fact is, he only takes three of them to show them, not all. I know. He chose an inner circle. If you do that today, they call it preference. Favoritism. Favoritism <laughs> <laughs> and all that. Yet he chose, not only now, he always chose the same three. Wherever he goes on a private mission, he always chose the same three. I think John was the one he loved out of probably he, all of them. He he may I mean he may love the all, yeah. But John probably was his favorite. Yeah. And there may be something about John that the others because at the cross, everybody ran, but John was there. Yeah. Was it because it was his brother, Elijah? Do you think it's because it was his brother? John was not his brother. They said they were two sisters' children, but I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah. Pastor Jules. Yeah. The, the, this transfiguration uh, where Jesus took them up and showed him his glow. You know, sorry, Miss Glory. It reminds me of the revelation where Jesus um revealed things to come to John in the Isle of Patmos. Uh, it's, it's like a shadow of what is to be, giving them a taste of what is to be. So that that's every a, that's time we go to Revelation, it unveils mystery that sends us way back. Every time I hear her voice, I remember Sister Sam. I keep hearing Sister Blackman's voice for right now. The, if you look at Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1, let me show you something here. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Read. Let me hear you again. You can read it from you have the mic. Read in the mic. Or give it to somebody if you want. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John. Continue. No, that's good enough for the thought. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. Did he know it before? No. Did Jesus Christ know it before? The contents of revelation before? I would say no, because if God gave it yeah. to him, a revelation, he probably didn't know. It just to me, just like when when Christ said he don't know the day or the hour when he's gonna return, only his father knows. So to me, the the there were knowledge that were limited to Christ while he was in a fleshly form. Very secret, right? Top secret. The revelation of Jesus Christ, the one God gave unto him. Revelation means to reveal. If it is God that revealed it to him, did he know it before? And that's a that's a good question. I I think he but he knew it. I use this when I met people say Christ and God is the same. I use this to differentiate the world from both of them. I would say at the time appointed, God revealed it to Jesus to reach to show. His servants. But it was only at the appointed time. That's that's how I would understand it. Anybody on the floor who wants to take a look at it and give a voice? I remember. Um, I I, okay. At the resurrection of Christ, he said, all power. All power is given unto me. But that's that not power. Before, huh? That's not power. Before the before this thing was done. Yeah, but that's not power. You think there will be a secret at that time when after the resurrection that he did not know? Everything, is, you don't even know when he was coming except when God tell him. The revelation and Joel said, he will say, the time is come. Come, put on the sickle, get up. The harvest is full, the press over right, but the wickedness is great. Get out. Time to go back. I didn't so know, but this written was after his resurrection. And when he resurrected, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. But this is not power. This is something else than power. All, all things given unto him. I don't think there was a secret that was high. That he said, no. Yes, I don't think there was a secret that he did not know after his resurrection. In other words, God will always, let me see, let me give you a scripture and see if we could break it down. Um, who alone have immortality? Timothy. Timothy. So, Paul, you had something while I, while I get the scripture? Yeah, I think you had a contribution. Oh, she can bring uh, it up. To get it, uh, more immortality is written only one place in your Bible. Oh, so much is you don't get it. Six sixteen. Sister so, Paula, go ahead. Well, I get the scripture. There, there mm -hmm. are there, there were things that Jesus did not know, but one thing I know, he did not know when he is going coming back. God never revealed that unto him. Then it is still a secret. And um, Jesus never did anything by himself. He said what he, what he speak is for that, put it in him to speak. Anything that he did, it, his father was in him, telling him what to do and that's what he did. Even the words he speak, his father was in him, 
telling him what to do. That's what I believe. He did nothing without his father. He never glorified himself. He always exalted his father. And so many times he said, his father, his father. So he said, if, if you don't even believe that the father sent him, believe the work that he did. That is, he did it through his father. So I, I, will, I will take some time and do what verse is that, Brother Gideon? As a person of 16? 16, right. Okay, read, let's read verse 16 and tell me what you understand. Who only has immortality dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. What do you want? He alone has immortality? But what about Christ? But what about God? Who alone has immortality, meaning those, the one who came in the flesh. <laughs> Which no man have seen, and he dwelling in the light, the one in the flesh. Because if you read it. Read the one on top, read it. Yeah, that's, that's what I was looking at, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only, only potentate, <laughs> the king of kings and lords of lords. Mm -hmm. Who only has immortality dwelling in the light. See, and to me, that's how I understand it. Christ is the only one who came in the flesh that has immortality. Mm -hmm. That's how I understand this verse to mean. I just want us to take some time. It's not as easy as you just look at it and walk in. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Which no man have seen. No man have seen him. And can see. And can see. Thousands see Christ. Thousands saw him after the resurrection. And many others. First Corinthians 15. Paul tells us he was seen of 500 at him. After the resurrection. The apostles saw him. They eat with him, they touch him, they do all. Say that again. Okay, my question is we could okay. all, we could all I only put it on the floor so we could look at it. The, you know? the thing is with Paul, right? He have his 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 and he all over the place. But so, <laughs> we, when you have personal knowledge, right. you can talk about things you know, as he said in 2 Corinthians 12, what I heard is not lawful for a man to utter. So what he wants to release, he released. Daniel had his and the angel tell him, don't write it. That stay with him. John the Revelator, the angel said, sit thou, do not this, don't put it down. But they see it and they know what it is. But it is hidden from the human race for God's only purpose. Let, let's go over verse 15, Allah Jules. Which mm -hmm. in his, whose times? Who's his right there? Read 14, he'll give it to you. Okay, that thou keep the commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which in his times, or Christ That would time, be the antecedent of the now. Right. Christ shall show... Who is the blessed and only? Who's going to show that? Christ. Christ is going to show us someday. Right. Not him. That's how, that's how I read it. Okay, go ahead. So Christ is going to show us who is the only blessed and potentate, potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. So the kings of kings and Lord of lords here is not Christ, it's God. Well, not only he that holds the title, the Heavenly Father holds that title as well. And and if I read the verse correctly, I would say that the King of Kings and Lord of Lords here represents God, the Father. <laughs> we'll take time, we'll get it. <laughs> the fact is saying, who only have immortality? Are not the angels carrying immortality? I don't think so. Or the angels don't have immortality? <laughs> I don't think so. 
Okay, yeah, I would like believe it. verse 16 is referring to God. That's how I would read it. You don't think angels have immortality when they carry? I, hold on. Over six, over 5,000, 6,000 years, they're still alive. Yeah, so they must have the immortality because the Bible says that God made him a little lower than the angels, just a little lower. So angels don't no, die. No. Angels can die only by God at his will. That does, that does not mean they don't have. Speaking of Leviathan in the book of Job 40, he said, can an arrow or a spear pierce his skin? No, but he that make them can make a spear to pierce him. Hmm? Exactly. Yeah, I, I, un I understand, but I'm looking he, at he the... Create the program on your computer can destroy you. Yeah, but I'm looking at the state of the nature of the angel that would be immortality because because if the angels don't have immortality mm -hmm. and you probably will have a body like this right will you have immortality it does. and i think it the, the two words in our bible we need to be careful when we do eternal everlasting they are not the same but they can be interchangeable But the both of them in the context can carry the same meaning. Everlasting means as long as it lasts. Eternal may be having no beginning, no end. Sodom and Gomorrah suffered the vengeance of everlasting fire. But they destroyed. By the Jews. Like I say, some of these words, they have been used interchangeable, but in the proper context, they don't mean the same. You had something, says Apollo? Mm hmm? Maybe you say you have everlasting life is until your life period ends. Yep. And if someone said they shall have eternal life, that's a different thing. Eternal, yes, it's an odd, it's, a, it's forever. Eternal, more refer to forever. When you speak about the Almighty in the eternal sense, he has no beginning, no end. He's eternal. Self exists. I don't want to teach it like that since he have a beginning because he is a son. A son must have a father. So there the son has a beginning from the father. So it may be difficult even in a discussion to put it in a balance and say, you know, and especially if we believe he's the firstborn of every creature, the beginning of God's creation, so if he's the beginning of God's creation, it may not be self-exist. In Revelation 1, 8, Christ said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. That statement Christ made. It doesn't change what I do. Huh? It doesn't change what I do. He is the Alpha, God's firstborn. He is also the end of God's creation in X, Y, Z, in creating a son. He never create another one except that. Even Adam was called the son of God. Adam is the Alpha of creation. All you read in Isaiah, even today, God said, if there was another God, I would have known. Yes. It was not two God and one become Christ. We know that. Well, I know that. 
It's never been what he tried to teach. There was two of them and one decided to become the son of God. He said, I searched the whole heaven. If there was another God, I would have known. Mm -hmm. that, eh? I mean, it is for human beings, you have a limit of understanding, a limit of knowledge until the time come when everything will be brought onto all man. Then until then, what do you teach? No, I mean, you teach as much as God revealed to you. <laughs> Well, let's go with anybody on the floor looking at it. I mean, I try sometimes not to bring up these things because a lot of study is really needed to rightly divide the word of God. Because sometimes you've seen it for the first time, and to come up with an answer accurately can be difficult because you need to sit down, look at it, take side reference, all of that, and then know. So... Is is that interpretation correct, fellow Jules? Verse when they say, "Who only has immortality, dwelling in the light," that refers to God the Father. Christ is showing who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, which represents me, God the Father. We did that a few weeks ago. That Christ's resurrection with a resurrected body, may not be like that of the angel. We agree. Christ being a spirit may not be like the angel. Touch me. Handle me. I am not a spirit. Say it. Father. It is not me that say that. He said, I am not a spirit, but yet is in a spiritual form. So as the same thing Philippians said, he was in the form of God. But, but, he, not robbery but he didn't see it as something to hold on to when he was asked to become man to save mankind, he gladly gave it up. For the joy that was set before him, he had another promise where he would be exalted and elevated even higher than where he was. So he gave up that one for the one that was to come. So if he have a, um, a title or power greater than what he had before, and they're saying he is God. That means he's greater than God now when he, <laughs> when he has his... But you can't be greater than the man who gave you the power. And, and that's where we show the logic is flawed, if you Egypt, say that. In Egypt, Pharaoh said to Joseph, only in the throne will I be greater than you. You are governor of all Egypt. Without you, no man lifts a foot to go anywhere. But when it comes to that, I am the greatest but you have the authority to do all what you want with my consent. Right? Maybe we'll come back up. There's one or two points there I still need to point out to you all. We, go better. we have time, Mother Jules. No, we want to go through something else. <laughs> Anyone have any mm -hmm. questions online for Pastor Jules? When Christ yes. resurrected the body I that was higher than the angels? No. No? Because in the scripture that we quoted, it talks about that the glory he had before, he's going to yeah. get one. John 17. Three. Right. And he's going to get one. No, but that was the glory I had with the other body before I become human. But I give that up. And become something else. Yeah, but when you resurrected, didn't get back that glory. I, that's what I was trying to think. He didn't have it with him. You mean when he resurrected, God gave him back all the glory? Yeah. He could not have appeared before man with that glory. That glory will be revealed when mankind changed, their eyes open, sin eradicated, then they can behold the glory. But with the eyes and condition, they cannot be held that glory. So he could not have it after his resurrection. 
Mm -hmm. So that's what the transfiguration showed us. The shining, the changing, body as lightning, do all of that. That would be what he had before he gave it up to become. The new glory he have after the resurrection. Man cannot defeat that. You can because mm -hmm. thousands see him, they eat with him, they talk to him. Like I'm going to stand up to you soon. I am saying mm -hmm. he, if he attain any greater glory, is after his ascension, not his resurrection. Oh, after his ascension. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying if he had put that glory he had from the beginning, he would not believe here. Could not because the deal was to drop because, the glory. Because who will know become him in that glory? Is. Nobody. So he had to show himself the same way they had known him. That do not mean he had to have the power, but in the human side of life. He had to show himself the way they had known him for them to believe him. Or else they would say, I don't know that man. No, um, on the road to Emmaus, he was there with the two disciples and they didn't know it was him. No, because he was blinded the eye. Huh? The eye was blinded. They he could not had see. that power to do that. Like angels will see you. You may see them as this, as that, but that's not their real identity. Or shape of no, no, no. We understand that. We understand that. They can come like anything they want. Is what I am saying. When he ready to reveal himself, he opened their eyes. But they were never blind. They could have seen everything. They could have walked. But only what he didn't want them to see, they came. That's true. Hmm? It's the way that know him that have to appear for them to know that is he. Only when it, I mean, there are so many mysteries in life, but you need to know about the evil, not so evil, and the good. You need to know that. You see? Because there are angels or, or demonic power that does not exercise mischief in every form, like the evil one. I came in contact one day with one of them. I'm not asking you or say maybe. I was walking down the road with was four of us, two girls, two boys. I stayed at the back. They went to the village and I told them when you're all coming back, I will frighten you. When I saw it was after six, I don't see him. I told the boy, let's go and look for the girls before something happened and they think it's us. When I reached at a certain point, I was at the back. All of them passed. When I reached there, they had a banana plantation where we were passing between. There is four banana plants together, and only one of them starts shaking as something uprooted. And I look at it and I smile. They turn back, they saw me standing. They came around because they're looking at me. I look at it, I, it shake for roughly three minutes. I didn't move, he didn't stop. When he say I'm not moving, he stopped. It never repeats itself. Some people tell me he should have run. I said, I cannot see him. How can I run from him? Where will you go? How far can you go? You know, and if you run, you know you're scared. You are afraid. Where can you go? I stood still, all of them stood with me. They all stood looking at me, watching one tree out of all, shaking and shaking very heavy, as though somebody rooting it, but you cannot see nobody. But the tree is shaking, and I stand up straight, looking at it, and it never repeats itself. So then I told them, do not be afraid. If it had come to harm you, it would do that already. It came to frighten you, not to harm you. So like I said, there are personal experiences that I have that when I talk about it is because I 
witness it. I did. I witnessed it. I went on my plantation in the forest where I have my garden, my banana. I witnessed in the mountain by Bonfonkeri, the mountain that you when watching the hill, you see all this forest, forest there. A channel of the forest opened, a wide wind coming. I said, What? With a sound, I said, What? If that wind reached on my burden, I not one feet that will stand. But if I had really make up and understand what I see, I would have said, How could a, a, a hurricane make a channel and, and dare the wind travel? So when it reached on the banana, where I, it's only the tree where I was standing on the, that ship. Then all my body was brought on the upper day. <laughs> Fear too. And me alone in the bush. Then I put some psalm which I know by heart. It cooled down a minute. And I stayed there. I wonder what's going on. Now, at that time, they were declaring banana. So I take a ladder, go on top another tree to this flower in a banana. And the thing coming with that kind of speed on the banana tree, brother. But when it stop, it stop only on the one tree and only one that shake. You grab the whole banana. Only one tree that shake. This is what caused me. I said, what's going on there? I see my little Sam and it cooled down. I go on, on another tree. It's not a dream I tell you there, you know, brother. When I was on the tree, the voice and the power come upon me. I say things I cannot tell you what I say for fear. And the way it's shaking the, and that sound that it make over my head. I just take my little bag. I say, Thomas, you cannot run. You cannot run with what you cannot see. I go on another plantation, I have another place, the same place, but another spot. That thing followed me. And it followed me halfway. And when I reached by a ravine, he stopped there. And it's about a week later, I have a dream. The person said, may I come to you, but you will run. I said, no, I don't know you. He said, you don't know me? But he's a woman. I said, well, well give me a hug and make me know who you are. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not. If you cannot know, I will not touch you. Um, he said, but I come to you and you, and you run. Well, I, I just await. I said, oh, 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 oh. That, 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 <laughs> that day for true. He said, I come to you, but you run. What can you do? You don't know what it is. It's run, you have to run sometimes. But how can you run? You don't know where you're going. You can't run faster. So, 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 where would you go? That is how I get to know it was not any evil. It was an angel. Mm -hmm. But hear me. I was said that to uh, uh, an old man. I said, but why he could not talk to me? He said to me, if you cannot bear a little shake, you'll bear a voice. <laughs> and that is true. He said, he said to me, if you can bear a little shake, you'll bear a voice. That is true. Well, if there are mysteries in there, in the Bible, and there are some God want to reveal to us. But we are too afraid even to attempt to hear or to listen. I mean, I can give you all a lot of experience which I had with the evil spirit, top rank. I'm not talking about a private or a corporal or a sergeant. Top rank. But you may not believe it. So most of the times I just leave it out. I just leave it out. It's better when the time will come that you may have a little experience, we can sit together and share it. But until then, it may be difficult even to make you understand it because it does not seem possible with you, man.
So this is where we serve in God. God, Christ, may be willing to reveal more things to us, as he said in the book of St. John. And Paul said, there are many things that I could have teach you, but you are not ready to accept it. So I'll just keep it back. And you don't, you don't know what they were, yet they can be profitable for you in the ministry. But because of unbelief, because of the content, he rather do tell you because he's going to do more harm than good to you. So we miss great opportunities. Yet we are called children of God. But they are there. Some will come back. If you have desire to seek it, like he said, if anything be otherwise, God will reveal it to you. But you got to make up your mind to deal with it. Because once you master it, you'll become a slave to it. If you don't want to be a slave, then you can't. Welcome, my dear. God be with you. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to be a slave to it, then it's going to hurt. You can't tell it to people because it's way off. It's way in. People wouldn't believe things. Things. Who would tell me a donkey talking? I would never believe, but Bilam wouldn't talk. Bilam won't talk. Because God had a message for Bilam. Even the very stone would cry if I wanted to and pass the message. You know, Elijah, that what you said. That because you see, when the angel come to me, that was my prayer. I want to talk to an angel. Mm -hmm. But expecting an angel to talk to me like a human being, mm -hmm. I was not ready for that. But they are, they are too powerful. There, there was from that time mm -hmm. my prayer this prayer never come to my mind again they we are too powerful because, because angel said daniel said to not gabriel another angel from the time that you come close and touch me there's no strength left for me. daniel was on the ground so he had to touch daniel again and put him to stand up because daniel cannot stand the power of the angel to be in his presence that weakens mankind, different type of magnet. That's what I thought. You will see, you will talk to an angel, you heard, but you're not ready for that. But if you are custom, you will stand it. If you are a custom, you will know. If you make yourself a custom, you have more power than you think you have. If I tell people that I would have said and said, Lord, I need to talk to Michael when Michael would come. But that sounded impossible for you to summon angels and angel come. But I have done it. But I cannot tell nobody how it's been done. So you could learn or practice it. But I tell in people, Elder Jules have done it more than once. I did not all minister in spirit. Send forth to minister unto them that shall be heirs of salvation. But we limit ourselves. We limit ourselves. Why do you think angels always reach as soon as you have a misunderstanding? You don't see them, but they are your bodyguard. You respect God, you will feel their presence. If you don't respect them, you will not know. They keep their distance. You know, they keep their, they are not omnipresent like God is. So they may be somewhere else, but seeing what's happening to you on the computer screen, there it is. You sit in your home and you have camera over all your house. You're in a room and you could see every room in your house when they do. Nobody knows you they're watching. That's what mankind has done. But every area, corner of the house, people search, come in, you can see them, yet you're in a room and nobody see you. That's as close mankind has been. We do not know all what we should know. And we don't. Opportunity which come. Take for instance, as I said, Jacob running away from Esau, but he fight an angel. Let me go, he said, no, not until you bless me. I'll die, but I must get the blessing. 
The angel touched the hollow of his thigh and he limped. He said, uh-uh, I'm not letting you go. That's not it. If that is what I have to go through to get the blessing, I'm not letting you go. The day breaketh, let me go. I, some people say angel don't have a body. What did Jacob hold? If they are spirit, they are air. What was it Jacob holding on to? Well, it is something he's holding on because the angel can't get away. You can't hold air and air don't escape. So he gripped and the angel said, let me go. The day break up and he said, I'm not letting you go. The angel touched the hollow. He limped, but he said, I'm not letting you go. This is the blessing. Your name shall no longer called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God. Imagine my father is the king. What the prince could do in the kingdom of dominion as a prince. Well, we say in that some blessing does not come without a suffering. No blessings come without it. All right, let's say some. You get the normal blessings. You get blessings for doing something that pleases God. You don't just, hey, God bless you. For what? Well, I say God bless you. It don't work like that. It's just a cliche the human use. You know, there are people who worry. That's what the Lord said in Matthew when he sent them out. If you bless this house and it's not worthy of it, it will come back to you. He ain't staying there. They don't get it. You can bless it if you want. Not worthy, the blessing come back to you, not them. That's the way the Heavenly Father works. For as a prince, as the power with God, and with men, you shall prevail. That's the blessing of Jacob. And it remained up to today. Is it upon his children too? Maybe not. Because the children must have their own covenant with God. They must accept God as their God. Just like Jacob, Isaac, Abraham did. In our Bible, who was Tira, the father of Abraham? Hmm? Babylonian? Uh, let's say Iraqi. Instead of Babylonian, let's say Iraqi. Hmm? Today is Iraq. No, no. In Iraq is Babylon, Assyria, Nineveh, or of the Chaldean and Mesopotamia. All of them in Iraq. All of them are places Abraham Lodge dwell, having his childhood. All of them in Iraq. Okay, who do you know when God called Abraham? Is Tira that move him? His father? Move him out of Mesopotamia to Haran. He stayed in Haran until his father died. And when his father died, God called him again. Get thee out from there and move. You're going somewhere. Hmm? So he, he didn't went back to the first place. He moved. Not the first time. Mm -mm. It's not twice he made travel to go. He left from here to here, but he never reached there. No, but he went back and come back. Mm -mm. He didn't go. He didn't go back from the Chaldean. As far as I can remember, when his father died, he moved to go to the land of Canaan, and there is where they give him the nickname the Hebrew. Hebrew was not spoken of as a place of that but a nickname given to a man. It's not a language. Hebrews, like when you talk about Palestinian, there is no nation named Palestinian in our Bible. They may be the same as the Philistines, but there's no nation named Palestinian who say the land is ours. You have no father in the Bible called Palestine. Again, when the Lord called Abraham, his father was... Uh... Image worshiper. Yeah, but it was he who took Abraham from there. 
to journey. And they took Lot with them. It was he who took Abraham. The I heard people say they were idol worshiper. I rather say they lived in the land of idol worshiper than to say they were idol worshiper. Hmm? I have a question. I had a conversation with a guy here. I was running some work in William Delight project as a foreman. And when the guy looked at me, he said, where are you from? I told him I came from so-and-so. And he said, no, nobody who ever came there has done anything good. Nobody has become anything good who come from that area. But I told him, believe me, I am from there. And if you tell me about your people, I will call all of them by name for you. Be surprised. But it is God's duty. I will take one out of a city, two of a town, bring them where I am. Sometimes we have to leave our comfort zone to be able to see God clearly. Too many obstacles in our way. We cannot give proper judgment or even give the attention to God that he deserves. We got to move out of our, get thee out of thy kindred to a place where I, I want. Idiot. From that day, part of the descendant of Abraham was wood off, but the new generation is starting. Um, from the beginning of the Jews, mercies of God is not because of the righteousness of man. Noah found grace. I've, I've, did I tell you about that again? Genesis 6 or 5? 6, I think. Gideon. 8? Gideon. Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Let's look at it again. Let me show you. There's something there that's wearing glasses. If you could take out the glasses, you will unmask it. Gideon. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The question on the floor, how could it be written Noah found grace when God said, you alone I found righteous? Before me. Fast. But that lift on you there. Hmm? Molly, you go answer my question. I don't know. I just came. I'm trying to see where you guys are. <laughs> Sorry, I just came. Actually, I'm not even in Texas. I'm in Canada right now. So was that so so my mom and my dad, my sisters are doing well. You can see them. Right I see them, but they cannot hear me. I don't know if they'll hear me. I know my, I don't know my mom hearing me. Oh, they can hear you and you can hear them if they want to. Okay. Yeah, the world is coming closer and closer every day. <laughs> yeah. what is, why is it the Bible said to Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, but you only have I found righteous in this generation, and then said Noah found grace. In the eyes of the Lord. Because Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord and grace is an unmerited favor. So at that time, compared to the people around him, he was the only one who found, I guess, living according to the standard. So that's you how You use the word unmerited favor, yet you say he was righteous. Huh. And then you said he did not deserve the favor. How do we put that together? Because technically, as human, nobody deserves anything. That God doesn't see it like people tell you that, but that's not the truth. That's not really? the truth. No. I don't want to teach it like that in all cases. If God train you, bring you up, and you obey God, he reward you. People need to understand that. Not what 
Even a man worked for me and I promised him $50. When I see the work he did and how he do it, I give him 80. But our bargain was 50. Okay. Could I say he didn't deserve the 30 more? After seeing what he did, how hard he tried to struggle, and I'm pleased with what he did. I mean, there are cases in the Bible where God did not give us things because we were worthy. But remember, everybody God called, he made them worthy before rewarding or awarding them. We need to look at it from that angle too. Elder Jones, I had a question just before. Um, I don't know what time it is for you all here. Um, I have that question since last week, and I'm so glad I came on this. Um, Out from your lesson in church? No. So last week, when we were on Zoom last week, I wanted to ask it, but the topic was so nice, so I didn't want to <laughs> take around to it. So that, the Friday before Saturday, I was watching a YouTube thing, and it was all about revelation and everything. But then this preacher, I think he's a um, a well-known Seven Adventist um, preacher, and he came up with the idea that Michael the Archangel was Jesus before the reincarnation. Have you ever heard any? I mean, not reincarnation before his incarnation. Have you ever heard anything about that? No, it is. Go to huh? Hebrews. Go to Hebrews. Is it Hebrew one? Hebrew one. Oh, he gave all those. He gave all those um, scriptures. I don't have my book with me. No, I wrote everything he said. He's not giving you what I give him. Because we're on two sides of the coin. What are you still in Canada? Yeah, Daddy, I was at church. I just came back. You get it? Which of the angels? He mentioned. Huh? I know you're probably going to say which of the angels have you said thy throne of God or um, something look at it look at Hebrews 1 5 yeah Hebrews 1 5 so unto which of the angels said he at any time thou art my son not Michael, nor Gabriel, nor none of them. Look at it again and give it back to him. to we'll see what he can do with it. Yeah, I, I don't have my notes with me. I have my notebook back in Texas. And he mentioned all those things and he came up with all angle. And remember, they were saying Michael the Ark or the chief of angels. But he was saying just because he was the head of angels doesn't mean that he okay, was. Okay, let me, let me give you another one. Is it Daniel 9? From the time that I set up Daniel 9 here, thy prayer was heard by the prince of the kingdom of Persia who stood me for 21 days. And lo, huh? it's Hebrews 9 here, yeah. not Hebrew Daniel. Daniel, Daniel. From the time thou set up the, around 20 something, verse 24, 23. Hmm? Go up again, go up. Is the wrong one? It is in my book, but I don't have no book. I want to point out something there to you, my dear, that he could throw it in his face. It was a preacher. Not it's, it's not so... <laughs> it can't be twelve. And I think the reason why he said that is because Daniel of the, the, the titles they gave. Can't be or, uh, Where Daniel Michael was praying and name. fasting. But behold, when thou set up thy foot to pray, thy prayer was heard. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days. 
But he's not saying that he is right now. He's saying um, prior to coming to Earth, he was. I want to. I just want you to see it yourself. But I get in a problem to get it. It's not twenty six. It's higher than twenty six. Daniel ten. Ten thirty. Ten thirty. Read it. Let me hear you. Read, go ahead, read it. Then who's who's reading? Anybody who can read. Okay, 10 12 says, Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine eyes to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia will stood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes. Okay, stop there. What did you read it again? But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes. Christ never occupy any position equal to anybody else. But you read in one of the chief Michael is. Uh -huh. Okay. I Very see. put orders equal to Michael. He's one of the chief. Tell him, tell him, will and come back again. He's missing something. According to Mario Mohead. Tell him, will and come back again. Huh? There are other places. I wish I had my notes with me because I am not home, so I don't have it. Because I, I wrote okay. everything. I was pausing it and playing it and replaying it because I'm like, this is strange. And it keeps telling the congregation, you're not convinced. Then they give you another scripture. <laughs> they, they don't know what it is. They claim Jude 9 to be Christ. No. And it is written in Daniel 12.1. At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince who stand there for the children of thy people. There shall be a time of trouble such as not been seen at that time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone is found written in the book. At that time Michael will stand up, not Christ. If Michael is Christ, how could he be heaven prepared for you and still fighting war on earth? They need, they need to learn a lot. That's the little Italian Jew, I'd say, but if she's wrong, they're wrong too. He, he mentioned nothing about her there, but I don't know. I just wanted, wow, never heard that um, that point of view before. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, before you come with Adventist teaching, I know where they are heading, where they're coming from. Okay. And then that same uh, same Adventist um, people, they were um, they were explaining the map of the beast and everything. And the preacher at that time was saying it's not a number six 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 that like we're all expecting. But um, his point was it's more like a political system. And he gave the whole thing of rule. Who did and... that dog bachelor? Oh, I don't. Know. If I I'll have to go to my history to see who, okay. who did that. Okay. But it was one of them. He went in depth. I was, <laughs> I had to play, pause, replay, write down every single thing he was saying. But the whole thing it was saying, it is not. not well, if there. the Bible says number is 666, who could tell you that's not true? Because he he um he went and explained the same thing um like we used they told us a long time the six six meaning like carrier speedy Dell or whatever that is the there is speedy. let me tell you when King Romulus built Rome his name in the Roman was Romith and it gave you six 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 the L N G White will give you six six six. If you know how to get it, you will get Ellen G. White in numerals to give you 666. But you can't call her because it's the number of a man and not a woman. That's how you distinguish. But 666 could be derived from other places. It does not only have to be from the Pope. But that does not mean it cannot be. But then there are other 666 you could arrive at by calculating 
not only the no Roman numeral, but also the Latin, of which ancient language spoken by Rome or Italian, wherever it is, because the place is really Italy. Rome is the capital. So if Christ said the number is that, it can be figurative, but it have to be that. What was the man's name you say again? Did you say dog bachelor? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what that's oh you know, yeah, that's him. He's okay. the one who gave the, the teaching about Michael because I have it in my history. Yeah, uh, the you, of by Michael, the time the, you start doing it, I'm even telling you who the teacher is. That cannot be <laughs> thinly, it has to be dog bachelor. That's okay, Mama. Okay, I guess you know them very hear. well. Let me hear. Please let me hear you, Sister Daphne, please. Excuse yes. Sister Mel for a while. Ella Juice. Yeah. I have a question. A big one? If if somebody came from the world, the person married, and the person divorced in the world, and the person married to a next person, and the person and that person came to church. What church has to do with that person? Can that person pick in the lesson can that person be a member can that person be a baptized member speak to me elder jules sister daphne are you still in france yes elder jules okay i am asking you that because in cayenne they have a problem like that and today i heard in uk uh, uh, uh nelda was talking about that i want to hear from your mouth And you want the truth? Yes. The truth is every marriage agreement a man entered in, God would have his decision on it. No matter what is the reason why you do it for, God has sanctioned it. In the, wo in the world, this is the language of forgiveness. God will forgive you for what you have done not what you will do. My own parents usually say to me, a man once stole a goat, feel bad, went and confessed. He said, Father, I steal this goat. Will you forgive me? And the one that I will do when I go in back, I see another one, I'll take it, forgive me for that too. God <laughs> don't work. God don't work like that. He forgive us for what we have done not what we will do. Whatever you do after he forgive you, you got to go back to him. Religious, but Sister Daphne asked you, can the person comment on the lesson? Can the person partake in service? That's what she's asking. It depends on which minister is there because we give rights to visitors even in lesson study. But some churches do not accept that and I don't push them. But most churches we know see them as human. We give them a right, even as visitors' right, to participate to a certain level. But there are certain offices they cannot hold, or certain things they may not allow them to participate. That's the truth. Because the brother said, that if the person come from the world, divorced in the world, married in the world, and the person had the, the word. The Bible never came... say that, Mama. People tell us the Bible say that, but that's not true. The Bible never say that. Give me a second. Let me. Sister Daphne. Yes. Let's Let's be reasonable. We married that person when we were in the world. Uh -huh. We live good. Things turn out bad. We divorce. Uh -huh. Should we say the marriage was not good after it went good for 20 years? 20 years, we had no misunderstanding. We had eight children, all blessed by God. 
after we get in our old age, we're not getting along and we separate or divorce. Should we say that that marriage did not work? Or we make a mistake in going into it? It is mankind's excuse to get a way out. I wish sometimes that I would give a way out, but then I'm looking for it, but the Bible doesn't seem to. Let him that steal, steal no more. Steal no more. The sin of adultery as being taught by some churches is wrong. Adultery is not only the second marriage, but sleeping with somebody that is not your original husband or wife is also adultery. So here it comes. It is not only because you divorce that one that it is, but you marry another and you're sleeping with another man's wife or husband. That is adultery. I know I have a lot of preachers listening. They don't come on, but I know they're listening who would do that. And I will explain it to them as it is written in the Bible, the same. Okay, Sister Daphne, how is health? I am then not too bad, Elder Juice. I want to go home. What happened? You cannot go home. I am waiting because uh, I the hospital in Cayenne should be should say yes I can come. I read if you. They, if they don't say I can come, I cannot go. Let me ask you, where is Eloa? Eloa is in France. Uh huh. Where is he there? Yes, he is in France. He has five children. I didn't hear you good. He has five children. Yeah, I'm expecting him to be big. Mm, he's in France. Yes, I remembered him one time when I was in Cayenne. He mm. came for prayer. And yes. then the detail and I pray for him, and he started crying. He said, you mm. give me a little prayer. I want big prayer. I asked him, why you want a big prayer? Because I have become disobedient to my mother, to my father. I don't know why I'm doing it. Something is wrong. I want a big, big prayer. He changed. He changed, praise God. Yeah, I can never forget that young man. Mm. And so on. He recognized there's more to what he's going through than just a little Haley Mary full of grace. <laughs> he wants he want something bigger than that to be delivered. Yeah, I will never forget him. So we may find it in different... Okay, we have a sister here with us who have a question. Let me hear you, dear. I have a question, too. It's on. What we're saying is that, saying that the person married to somebody that was divorced, if if they could get baptized. Now, if that person accepts the cross and asking God to forgive them, what wrong with them getting baptized? If you ask God to forgive you, you have to stop doing what you were doing that was wrong. That's it. That's what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. She find that even though that they, they repented of the sin, and it is, like I said, it is not for me to say who God accepts, but if I follow the practice of the teaching of the Bible, the minister will say the same to you. You've got to live that type of life in order to be accepted. The minister will say that to so you. What's the that even though they married now, they have accepted I am, um, like I said to her, some churches give you visitors, right? You can worship, you can fellowship, you can, but they may not give you membership. Right? That depends on who the pastor is, how we see it, how we evaluate it. Some pastors would do that. 
and I don't want to teach that they are wrong either. For membership? Hmm? You say um, if they give you, you don't want to teach wrong, if they don't want to give them membership rights? I said, if they grant them visitors right, allow them to fellowship, which is not membership. They are different. If, yeah, they but why feel, if they feel comfortable, I am not the one to judge. But the minister who would be administering would say to them, there must be a repentance by leaving what you are doing and come to God. But Elijah, you will not baptize the person? I doubt very well, no. Wow, so we're refusing people baptism. Oh, John the Baptist did. Who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruit suitable meat for repentance. Otherwise, you're but, not baptizing. But, uh, the Baptist did it in Matthew was... 3. Hmm? I was about to say that's slightly different, but anyways. Matthew chapter 3. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees came to his baptism, he said unto them, O ye generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruit, meet for repentance. You are running away because something is coming, but your heart is not right with God. Therefore, you go and come back again. Bring forth fruit, meet for repentance. And wait, do not think to say to yourself, we have Abraham for our father. That don't make it okay either. For God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. It's not only me who did that. I'm, I'm so what okay. proof do they have to give that they're not living in sin for you to know? Because this is this is hard. I know some the sacrifices we have to make for God worth it. For I reckon that the suffering of this present world is not worthy to compare with the glory that shall be revealed. Sometimes for our mistake, we have to make sacrifices. It may not be reconcilable, but there may be sacrifice we make. God can work in our behalf. And you remember the story between, is it Nabal and Abigail? And David? Yep. David said to her, Rest with the Lord God who have kept me from not committing sin this day. Except you had come with this, they would not leave one of his servants by tomorrow. She didn't care what Nabal does. Though he was rich, Abigail said to David, when the Lord make you king, I want to be a maid. I'd rather be a maid in your palace than the wife of a rich man. And by tomorrow, when the man wake up, very angry, he turned out to be a stone, rock hard and died. Abigail was free to marry David and had another life. So I have a question from Merle, though. Merle, would you say that the church should baptize people who actively live in sin without <laughs> repentance? Uh, no, but, but then Gideon, you technically don't, you could only... <laughs> know what people tell you you will still not know but I, I feel like if somebody asks for baptism and they really, really want to repent why why deny them because you have it back to front repentance from first i have it back to front repentance comes first yeah repentance and then baptism not baptism then repentance but the person, but I would feel like the reason why the person came for baptism because they're already sorry for what they did. Yeah, but if they go back to after they baptize and they go straight back into the adultery, how could they say they repent? Um, how many how many people have we baptized in the church and they stay five ten years and then they go back and still do the same thing after being there for a long time? No, but what what we're saying is a uh, the pastor has the knowledge that the person is living in adultery. 
should the okay. pastor baptize the person knowing that the person is going to commit adultery after they get baptized intentionally? This is not something that may happen like, you know, due to temptation or vulnerability. It's something that will happen because you are literally, you know, committing adultery. Okay. So that, that's my question to you. How would you respond to that? Well, then in that case, I guess, yeah. I think they had a brother that said they had a question. Yeah, I'll address it, Brother Daniel. Yeah. Brother Daniel, how are you? I did. I want to I want a clarification on a, on a particular text. Luke 16, 8. Um, is it is it the children of the world in their generation wiser than the children of light? What's the scripture, Brother Danny? Luke 16, 8. What all, all I'm hearing is 16, 8. Was it for was it book? Look, look, look. Okay. Uh, a little breakdown on that text. Um Jesus Christ so from, commended the unfruitful servant. Unfaithful rather, servant. When he get the news that he was going to be fired from his job. He went among the creditors and said, how much you owe my master? That one said 100. He said, take your bill, write 50. The other one, 150, take your bill, write 60. Then the Lord said, you see what that man did? He's doing that so when he get fired, the people he show mercy on can receive him unto themselves. But the servants of God does not act that way. So in that sense, he's saying the children of this world, even with their scheme, are acting a lot wiser than the children of God. Uh, break, down the, break down the word. They, um, break down the word. They, they, they are wiser than, than the children of light. Um, a little deeper in, into that. Um, Maybe he didn't understand how you explained it. Hmm? Maybe he didn't understand how you explained it just now. Wait. Okay, brother Danny, what? Okay, let's you looking at Luke 16, verse 8, right? And yeah, Lord, yeah. Okay, the first wait a while. The, the first part, right? When uh -huh. see the Lord commended, is it the the Lord of the, the steward or Christ? Christ commended the steward. Because the, the word Lord there, represent Christ. Because the the word Lord there, I would have assumed that it's the the on the 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 the, the boss of the steward. Right. But he don't know. How can he commend him when he don't know what he did? Did you hear the question all the Jules asked you? No, I didn't get that. Say that again. How could the Lord commend him if he didn't know? He didn't know what no, is... word... okay. it is. I'm saying uh, the, the word Lord there. Is it Christ or is it the 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 boss of the steward? Christ knew because he told the story. The Lord of the steward did not know what he did. How can he commend him? Okay, I get you. Okay, so did you understand why the Lord yeah, commanded the unjust to it? I, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. Why would why would um Christ commend an unjust steward? He did not right. commend him as being right, but the tactics right. that he used uh -huh. in the event that he fall that he will be accepted by people he has showed mercy on is that wisdom the Lord spoke about. Are you uh, familiar with the Tower of Babel, um, Brother Danny? Um, the Tower of Babel, did. you know, God came down to see, I mean, you know, it, the story goes that they were so united 
that they wanted right. to build a tower up to heaven. And that was that was admirable how united they were to build a tower to reach the heaven. So in the event that God sent a flood, that they will be safe from the flood. All right. Was that was that righteous or admirable? The unity that they had. <laughs> well, yep. It, yes, wasn't, it wasn't it wasn't right it wasn't it it was it wasn't righteous because but, because of their unity they, they wanted to you know but the admirable um it was admirable because of how united they were in accomplishing yes. the task of building the temple the tower right yeah because of the united but the unity yeah. there wasn't 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 really a, a, a good but god thing. god a, commended them these things they begin to do, nothing will stop them. That was highly commended okay. by God to see the unity among them, what they intend to do, and the determination they had to accomplish it. The Lord said, the way they are going, nobody will stop. Okay. So all he did was confound the language. He couldn't understand anybody. <laughs> and then they just left it there, you know, so... Do you understand, Brother Danny? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So in no way should we allow the children of this world show more wisdom than the children of light. That's that's how I understand it. Say that again? We, we are the children of light. And we have God right. as our Father and the Holy Spirit to bring to us the knowledge and truth. I mean, normally the reading would have been, and his Lord said, not the Lord. So the children of this world, in, in, in right now, in, in, in our parable. generation, are you saying it's, they, are, they are wiser than children of light in terms of doing things? In the line of business, maybe yes, up to now. Okay. I mean, uh, I, I get have, you. have you ever seen a, a you know, a, for example, a, a good Christian businessman? <laughs> who who rents to people? The people say, "Oh, I don't have the money this today. Can you forgive me? Can you hold up? Can you sit and beat it, and I'll give you tomorrow." Yeah. <laughs> what stress would you have? Yeah. The Christian no open on Sabbath, while uh, while uh, the people of the world open seven days a week and all holidays. You know, so it's like they have advantages. They have, but they have a guy what said, ends? You know, you have what we call honesty and dishonest. Right. Dishonest people can have advantage because the world don't want truth. The world don't want truth. As you can know, you have heard it. There are people on food stamp taking food stamp from five different states. Well, I never heard that before. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Everyone have a different name, a different ID. Five different states they're collecting every month. That's not what you want to come They have really? prisoners in no. prison <laughs> who's getting a check of five, ten thousand a year in income tax while they are in prison. The IRS have no time to check all in contact. You file self employed, you look good, they give you your return. I'm already in prison for life. How much you could send me again? Is that why people couldn't be king and priest at the same time? Because it was a conflict of where they draw the line? Say that again. Is that why people were not priests and kings at the same time? Because there would be conflict where they have to draw the line? They want I'm not to talking be... about Melchizedek. That was the only exception. They want to be king. Well, being king or being priest, you reign supreme. You can make the law of the land the law of your church, the law of your land. That is what the Sanhedrin was doing among the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Whatever law that they passed was the law of the land. Yet they governed with the chief priests and it became the law of the church. So they have no opposition. It was very beneficial for them. But the scheme and corruption that in our world today I was reading not too long. A guy was saying he does not have a medical doctor license. 
but he opened an office, a medical office. He do not accept patients that are sick, but he go by the highway when he saw the beggars there, he offered them $200 to come to his office, but he billed Medicare 3000 for their visit. Before they caught him, he said he had already gathered over $2 million from Social Security and government. He paid them to come. So you can't say he treat them. He paid them and they bill for the office. These people go back with $100 every time they come, but no medication. The children of this world are still doing that. Have you not seen where people bail the Pentagon for $1,000 for a hammer that costs 10? They bail for the office where they order it, for the people who pick it up, for those who would ship it, for writing the order, everyone get bread on that one hammer. So, so I love yours. Yeah. So that's the point you're trying to make that the children of of this of this world and their generation are wiser. In that term, you you're making that 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 an analysis that they are wiser. But I, Wise, I wiser does true. not mean to be more honest. But they are more business minded, and they are. Okay, business minded. All right. Because it, it sure the children of because Ephesians nine Ephesians five it talks about the children of darkness, and when we when we change we we are no more the children, but we are the children of light. Mm -hmm. So if you become a children a, a child of God. The spirit of God guides you and make right decisions, right? In contrast to that text. Because if, if the spirit of God guiding you to make a right decision, how could it be that the children of this world are wiser? Brother Danny, I have told you over and over, a good man will not be saved. A righteous man will be not a good man. Too many Christians are playing good. Have people eating all their money, their wives are without, and people are enjoying it when they say in the name of God. That's foolishness. That's not wisdom. Right. You want a good name, you pay for it. You want everybody to say you are a good man, but you are broke. <laughs> that's that, true. <laughs> that, 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 that's okay, son. <laughs> it, 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 it is, like I say, having this experience. But Daniel, it's so bad that you have your own daughter begging daddy to buy a pair of shoes, and I don't have no money. And a total stranger come to you, begging you, you give them the money instead of buying the shoe for your daughter? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, is the there any happen. wisdom in that? I, and I, I that, that person you give the money to can afford to buy five pair of shoes? I, I, I see that happening. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, that, that that is true. Even within the church, we brethren okay. would rather help uh, an unbeliever than would help a believer They're just even like their own yeah 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 that's true this is the bible that we follow and that is where we gathered our wisdom and learn it there is a time when you say to somebody i can't afford to help you this week come back next week and there's a time you can say i can't give you what you ask i can only give you what i can afford but we don't want them to get vexed with us or say things. So we give them everything they want. And to your wife, you say, come out. I told you I don't have money already. You, but you <laughs> couldn't say that to the other one outside. That's it's true. Uh, 
How many times do you have to give them until you get broke? They will. Jesus How Christ said to the to Jesus said to the crowd, "You did not follow me because of the miracle, but because you get free bread and fish, you coming back for more." If you open a church now and they hear you giving lunch every day and breakfast, your coffer would end up dry before people stop coming. Some will come twice. Some will come and then send their wife after and their children and don't cook for the whole day. Jesus said you did not follow me because you see the miracle and believe, but because you were eat and your belly was full. You're coming back today for more. If I say that, you would say I accuse them wrong. I bad. I shouldn't say that. I make them feel bad. But my Jesus said it, and he was right. Because he knew their heart. You don't know their heart. <laughs> so you, Sister Molly, tell me. That's I okay. I'm, I'm just I, saying I'm, I'm, God knows the heart, but I am you, wearing a pants with a hole where my wife patch. You come into me with a suit, I will give you my $2 to go and buy another suit. And I have a pants. I have to know your heart to know your evil. <laughs> Sometimes people, I, I assume people help because they know the other person could repay them back versus the other person they could see. I wish I'm you just... good luck. I wish you good luck, my dear. If you believe that can happen, good luck. You know what I have seen, Mama? I have spent some time in Cayenne. I used to visit Cayenne in my youth, sometimes two, three times a year or more. I have seen people that the people from Cayenne hired. The woman they hired to be made, in one month the wife is out and the maid take over the husband. And it happens vice versa. This is something we have seen under the sun. It mostly happened to foolish people who try to play nice. Mm. Believe me, Mama, it can. You are living in a society that the person you go to, take them to the boss and beg them to give them a job because they need it. In three months' time, they start to carry word on you to the boss to take over your job. Mm -mm. I have seen that under the sun. Be careful. Don't drop your guard. God didn't make any foolish children. Wisdom is justified of her children. We turn ourselves into that but God didn't call us and make us foolish. That's why in, 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 the, Muslim, in the Muslim world that women, men don't allow women to do certain things. Okay. Like what? <laughs> Sister Murley, let me tell you. In our yes. world of today, <laughs> you don't always get what you deserve. You get what you bargained for or what you settled for, not always what you deserve. Do you understand me? Solomon in his ecclesiastic said, it is not save the buyer, it is not save the buyer, but he go home rejoicing. You offered him that, he wants to buy it. You asked $20, it's too expensive. $15, too expensive. $10, he said, I give you it. You want to get rid of it, you pay him. But he sell it for $50. You don't get what you deserve. <laughs> you get what you settled for, what you bargained for. In, in, in everything we do, we sell our time. The man give us $10 an hour, $12 an hour, $15 an hour. Because I need a job, I take it, but I know I worth $30. You never get what you deserve. 
you get what you accept, what you bargain for, but not what you deserve. He know you worth more than that. He know the job he'll put you on. He will make 10,000, but use 1,000 to pay you. He knows you worth more than that. But Ella Jules, just like the hired servant, one come at that time, one come at that time. Yeah. And, and at the end, all of them get the same pay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it is, man, he didn't rob them. He gave them all exactly. his own money. Hmm? <laughs> That's what he agreed to the, the first and, and, and the that, that at that time it was seems good in your eyes to agree to it. But they will not come at the earlier time. Yeah. It's vexed because they will not come at the ending, get the same pay. <laughs> but the the scenario in that. If he had paid those who come early, they would take their money and go. If he paid them last, <laughs> so they could see what he did. <laughs> that That's true. If you had to get your money and you go, you wouldn't see how much he gave me. But he paid me before you. So I ate. He gave that one twenty dollars. I expect him to got forty because I have. Uh, he gave me twenty. That's the problem. That is. Unless the they were paying them per hour, then he cheated them, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said, "I did I rob you? Didn't I bargain with you for 20 for the day? I mm -hmm. gave you 20. How did I rob you? This is the world we, the world we live in today. Group the English words in order, in some cases, to make it difficult for them. You know, if you are by your table, eating with your wife and children, and a man walk in and take the turkey and go with it, you cannot claim he steal it? Because you no. were there? No, he robbed you of the turkey. They said you steal when nobody home. But if they are there, it's robbery. Somebody was explaining the the difference between a thief and a and a robber. One a thief, a robber comes and he he comes and he inflicts pain. Yes, and the robber come inflicts... while you were there. The thief come when you out absent. That's what they are doing to us. After words of learning, a woman pushing a cow on top of a horse to eat grass. They still at it. We have robbery, we have theft, we have purloining, and there's another one again we have for the same sin. Um, you could go into I, it. A little yeah. I know it's late, but I just have one question for you. Are there certain profession you would not um, agree for some children of God to be in? Every except in the profession like um, hold uh, on, so hold on, sin contrary to the will of God. But apart from that, every profession you can earn a bread is good. I always you, advise children of God seek the profession where you could be self employed. Even somebody in the military. Yeah, military, the military have its weakness and strength. During my days as overseer of the military, in our constitution, we had put a clause. In countries where service to the army is mandatory, we are asking to comply, but not being active in duty such as fighting war, do this. We allow that to a certain degree, but some said no. But if it is mandatory, what do you do? They'll put you in prison, put you in jail, and put you back there. A group of men came to John the Baptist. I think you remember that scripture, is it in Luke? And said unto him, what shall we do? They were soldiers. 
as, as I remember it. We want eternal life, but tell us what we should do. He gave them three conditions. Do violence to no man. Accuse no man falsely. And be content with your hire. Don't strike. You get it? You might get it on the soldiers. Soldiers came to John the Baptist to inquire. You might get it on the soldiers. Or on the violence to no man. A fear That's is the three fear terms. Is hmm? A fear this work for a fear this pay. If you're not getting a fear this pay, how can you give a fear this work? Then you can walk out of it without instigating something that could lead to a riot that you cannot control. You get it, Brother Gideon? Okay, it's coming up on the screen in case you want it tomorrow. Okay, so we could go from verse 11. And he answered, said unto them, He that had two poor, no, let's go to verse 12. Then came also publicans to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than what is appointed you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. That is John the Baptist. Yeah. That is the answer that he gave. Yeah, A lot of the soldiers, huh? were the soldiers. No, that's John the Baptist. Uh, baptist were the soldiers yeah. baptized and repented and yeah, that's John and ah. Uh? A lot of things we may believe it's not there. It is there already written to all of places. But how could you tell Israel don't go to the army when it's mandatory to protect them as a nation? Hello, Jules, but Danny is asking if the soldiers were baptized and repented and all that stuff. Soldiers can be baptized, yes, but you avoid oh, worthy, violence. Worthy. Say that again. Were they children of God? Were they, were they, did they accept Christ as their savior and follow in the, 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 the and following Christ? They can because the army permitted, he allowed it, but you have to declare it when you're going in. You talking about in the verse here, Brother Danny, or just in general? Yes, in the verse there. So the, the question was like the type of um, em, employment a, 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 a child of God would, would take, would take up. But that but may not be. Soldier, a, those, these soldiers may, wasn't. That is not your first choice. But in cases. I remember when I came here in 1968, green card was floating, but as quick as you get it, they draft you to Vietnam. And a lot of people were running away who were entitled and qualified, didn't want to take it. <laughs> as you get it today, one week later, the draft came in. They pick you up, whether you're in your bed or sleeping, on to Puerto Rico to get ready to go to Vietnam after training. So a lot turn it down. Those who born there run to Canada, run back down island where they cannot find them. Because Vietnam was not regular duty. If you sign up for 10 years, you might not go to Vietnam. But if you sign just for three or two, be sure you will give your service before you go back out if you leave. Yeah, but the point I'm trying to make that these soldiers, they were not uh, children of God. They may not have been children of God, but they were right, interested so in the teaching what John the Baptist has to offer for eternal life. They may not be what we now know to be Christian, because the name Christian did not become popular, not until later, maybe around A.D. 60, A.D. somewhere, where that name became popular. After, I, after the establishment 
of the I, empire somewhere. I, I want to believe well, the soldiers were genuine. Yeah, let, let just, wait, 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 brother Gideon. I, I don't like that word you use in popular, you know. Say that again. The word Christian wasn't it wasn't mentioned among the among the among the, the Hebrews or in Christ's time. Uh, but Peter used it. Was it. Only, it was only after when Paul went no. to Antioch. Oh, when Paul no. went to Antioch. About that, yeah, that could be because Agrippa right. used it to Paul, thou almost persuade me to be a Christian. So even Agrippa right. was familiar with the term. That was when Paul came came back from Antioch, right? Defending himself, yes, before Agrippa. Exactly. Okay. I wrote yeah, but I because the question the sister asking is a very important question, and there are certain um 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 work um employment that is out there that when you accept Christ, I I think you have to be careful. Of, let, let of, me, of Danny, up and, uh -huh. Danny, let let Daddy say that. I recalled being in St. Thomas. There was a lot of people against nurses working on Sabbath. But one day we went there with Sister Mark's father, who was taken sick. And when they reached there, everybody saying, where's Sister Emily? Where's Sister Sue? Get them, are they there? You don't want her to work on Saturday, but your father's sick, you call it on Saturday? Do you read me? It's not fair. Because it's your father and sick, you are asking, where is Sister Emily? Where is Sister Sue? Where is so? And are they working today? Are they there? But you don't want them to work on Saturday. But you want your father to be taken care of. So you're looking for your brethren. When but we maybe, escape maybe before maybe God, maybe didn't consider the work if it was in the house with them, so they, they probably didn't consider it as work as in earning a No, way. but he was at the hospital. Oh, okay. When they brought him to the hospital, they wanted to make sure he's in good hands. These two sisters was working as nursing, and it was yep. the first two names in their mind. Where are you? I need you now. My father dying. Do you follow me, Brother Daniel? Yeah, but it's not. It's no, they were nurses. They were not. They were not doctors. When you, I, be, when I, you, I when will you not. Reach. I will not discourage my children to learn nurses, but I will talk to them about the consequence. That when you seek employment, there are areas where you don't have to work on Saturday, or where you could establish certain practices, and still do the. But we need the skill. Do you know what it is like my wife giving birth and I have a sister who's a midwife and I can't call her because it's Saturday? I mean, you can you can call her. She, she's not going to work. She's going to assist. She, she, she can go and assist and make sure that everything is okay and look, help. Look at the it's name not, you give her. Working. Because it is my wife, she's going and assist. If it is Brother Thomas' wife, she's going to work. Look at what we do to ourselves. I need to know, I, we believe we need to wake up. We need to wake up and be fair, be honest with some of our judgment. I am just saying, Elijah, just that, you know, yes. I mean, I understand, you know, what you are saying is what is common. What is common, but is it right? Because the people of the world right now, they they would say, well, okay, yeah, you are Sabbath keeper. Well, let me let me let me put your schedule to work on on, on Friday night, whole of Saturday, Friday night. In they, America, they, 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 you don't have to do it. If you said you're not working on Saturday, they would put you in. And anyway, most of the states, you have a right some places to work for three days a week at 10 hours, or four days at 10 hours, and you off Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If it's but, mandatory, they'll just not give you the job. I'm a victim of it. Say that again? Not, I say, if it's mandatory, they will just not give you the job. Okay. 
they well they can tell you no you can but it is your right if you tell them before they cannot force you to work no fire you if you don't work yeah so there are trades and things that we see we could be engaged in and there are some that i say try not to when you go into certain profession when you could have your own office you are free to open when you want and when you don't want leave it closed you may not be making so, 20000 a month but you will be satisfied with the 10 and the 15 so with so what you say hmm? what you saying that there are certain jobs that a uh, 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 a sabbath keeper should not take it is true right so it could because According to the scriptures, if we have to follow what the scripture says, we're going. If, if we do on the opposite, the Bible says that at at sundown is the Sabbath; no work shall be done, plain. Mm -hmm. And we have to leave it like that. Is if that, you I mean, want to, if you don't want to good. obey that word, well, do what you want. But it says at sundown. Sabbath is a, a day of holy convocation. No work shall be done. So we have to we have to stay right there and draw the line and say, hey, you, you, if I want to work, okay, well, I take my work and forget about the Sabbath. I, I have a question. Yes. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Pastor Jules, how are you doing? Bless Not us. bad. Right. Um, my, my question is, uh, Pastor Jews um, encourage us to be self-employed and stuff like that, and, which is which is good. But the way how the world is going, if I'm self-employed, let's say I choose to own a hospital, <laughs> as, as that's the conversation, do I close the doors on Sabbath? <laughs> if, you, if you want to be self-employed, you open business where you can be flexible, not business that will tie you down. But I wanted, I wanted to incorporate this same thing about um, working on Sabbath in terms of, you know, the, the, the type of businesses we have now, because uh, there are many today uh, with opportunities of owning um, like geriatric um, uh, wards and uh, home for the age and all them kind of things. There are a lot of opportunities with, with that, but in terms of doing jobs like that uh, or owning businesses of that nature, you tend to have care for persons 24-7. Is, so, is that my son? That's a little lunch. Go ahead. Yes, yes Purity, Pastor Jules. Purity, that's you? Yes, 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 that's me, Pastor Jules. <laughs> Go ahead. But, uh, as a Go show ahead. to be uh, listening. <laughs> Let yes, me... I was there listening. And I, was, I was just sharing the point. But I'm saying that when we have um things like, you know, the, the direction of the new businesses we have today and the, the opportunities in terms of healthcare and stuff like that, it's very difficult to, you know, to say, stay away when, when, when we ourselves are have to be directly involved with it because our, our parents are getting older and they need 24-7 health care. Uh, you know? There, that's there not, is, there that's are too much level. of a... There higher, there's too much of a high stake in the, health, in the health system. One would always be tempted to bail the government more money than it owed. That would be extortion. Thus, you're leading yourself to sin. Because if everybody bailing, like you have a union, everybody charging 3000 if they hear you charging one five, you're in trouble. You got to charge 3000 even though you know it did not, it does not worth it. That is extortion, and that is bad for you too, even in the business. So there are just certain business I would say don't go into. Yeah. 
Yeah, w w one of these days I was listening to a, a news reporter. He was saying that he was in Jerusalem, in Israel, and he, he was taking a taxi to one place to another. And he said that it's, the Sabbath was approaching. And he said, when you see the Sabbath come, if you don't, if you don't reach home before this, before the sunset, I'll put you down. Don't look for a taxi. Don't look for a taxi after the sunset. Because all the taxis, when Sabbath come, they stop. Don't look for a taxi. Make well, sure that's you in certain your... part of Israel, not all over. Yes, yeah. not all over. But there are certain parts when mm. the Sabbath come, the, 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 the mm. commuters taxi, they shut down. You no, know, the Western world people, we don't raise up like that. So this is why it is so difficult for us. Then let me tell you, in 1976, I was living in New York. I saw the Jews block a whole street, park their cars across, nothing go in there, nothing pass out, nothing disturb their service because it is their Sabbath. Yet everyone coming out come with a long cigarette, six inches long smoking. <laughs> this is what I witnessed myself. They will block, not even police could unblock it until the Sabbath is over. But on the other hand, the Sabbath is sacred to them, but everyone have a long cigarette, some head into a gamble hall, some going there when they came from the church. It's your culture. And clean and dry it on the ground. Is your culture? Maybe, is your culture? I, I, I don't. I let me say habit instead of culture, because every one of them is not involved in doing it. No, not everyone is true. So I would not call it culture. Like well, as I say, it's not a I would, go ahead. Well, I, I well, if you say not culture, well, I. Is, uh, explain why why it's not a culture is not because it's not uh, everybody who practice it it's only a chosen few who make it their habit of doing it so it would not be should not be called culture I, I, I would known, culture let me I... tell you I have known I was in California with a group of Mexican brethren. I was there by Elder William Hewer, where they had a big synagogue. When service dismissed at 12 o'clock, they would run to the shop next door and buy candy, buy bun, and come back in. But we'll cry against it. They say they never know it was wrong. There are things you will see people who call themselves Church of God are doing, and would wonder why. But yet they're doing it ignorantly, no idea, no knowing the consequence, and still believe they're doing it right. Like, um, so it's almost seven o'clock over here, everyone. So we're just going to wrap up, uh, you know, as Pastor Jules has to go. And um, we appreciate everyone who joined us. Um, um, and the, the discussions were very important. The questions were all valuable. Uh, we have recorded the session today. So anytime you want to go back and listen, you may do so after it's uploaded. Um, but before we leave, I'm I'm just gonna ask someone to pray for us in Jesus' name. Sister Lindell, I see you online. Are you, do you want to pray for us? Yeah, I was about to do that anyway. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, mighty God as Father, I give you thanks, I give you praise because you are an awesome God. I want to thank you for everything you have done and continue to do in our lives. Thank you, mighty God, for the word that comes and give us the mindset to understand and not only to understand, but to apply it in our lives so we could be better human beings, so we could be wiser and also that we could be the child and children you call us to be. 
Let your will be done. Go before us, mighty God. Protect us from dangerous sin and unseen. Those who will be traveling, we pray for traveling mercies. And I pray that you continue to cover us. Have your own way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And again, Amen. Richard, the dad is asking how you doing, Linda. All right, Daddy. I'm good. And Thomas is asking how Linda is doing. Yeah, I will call him later. I'm good. You can talk to her if you want. Yeah, but I'll call him later. They're still there. Mommy's cleaning the church, so when she's done. Okay. okay. Yeah. First is broken. I don't know what's going on. All right, All everyone. Right, yeah, take care. Sister Merle. Sister Merle.